Hello and welcome to episode number 11 of Saving Sunderland, the homegrown series where I attempt to turn Sunderland into a top six side using only British and Irish qualified players. You join me on the 6th of August where we play our first Premier League game at home against Crystal Palace. The team today includes one debutant, Izzy Brown makes his debut on the inside forward from the left position. The team lineup in full is Jordan Pickford in goal at back four of Donald Love, Julian Lescott, John O'Shea and Reese Wiggins with Charlie Adam and Lee Catamol in the centre midfield positions. Harry Arter is currently suspended. A, booking, a number of bookings they picked up from last season from Bournemouth has been carried over so he misses out. Right side of the wing is Duncan Watmore with Gary Hooper as the shadow striker, Jin Mainder for up front. Substitute bench today, Courtney House coming back from an injury, so he's only available to be on the bench today. Joe Wildsmith is our sub keeper, Jack Rodwell, Paddy McNair, Killian Kelly, Victor Nietzsche and Jason Cummins. So Kelly and Cummins, as well as Wildsmith, could potentially make their Sunderland debuts today. And the season has started. I would take as a minimum to match what we did last season, so that was 11th place with a bit more in the cups but I think with the players we've got we do have the ability to go higher up the table but I'm sure every Premier League manager will say that at this stage I want them to get to a good start we've had a decent pre-season unbeaten throughout didn't play any more games than I, than I told you about in the last episode so we didn't play any big sides so just played Darlington, Stadron, say, and DC United. We've got some good results in there. Duncan Watmore makes a run down the wing. Invincible into Hooper, into Catamol, Jermaine Defoe. Back to Donald Love, and we rebuild with Duncan Watmore on the edge of the box. Crosses it over, it's cleared. Easy Brown, Catamol, and it's saved by Mandanda. I did toy with the idea of playing Gary Hooper as my complete forward with Jermaine Defoe as a shadow striker, which I may well do as the course of the season, but I like Defoe in his position. Obviously, if you score 30 goals in a the season, then you kind of have to really play. A relatively quiet first half an hour. Jordan Pickford just picked up an sprained wrist. So I imagine that won't put him out of the game. But I do have Wildsmith on the bench if required. So half time, and we have been the better side. Four shots on target. Yep, seven shots overall with 56% possession. We are playing the home tactic. I will this season completely forget to switch between the home and the away tactic. So what I'll do is I'm just going to switch Defoe and Hooper around. Not going to make any ta other tactical changes at this stage. See how that works for the next 15, 20 minutes or so. I'm still on the lookout for a centre half as well, which hopefully I'll get one in before the end of August. I do have my eyes on Ryan Shawcross, but he does not seem to want to leave Stoke City, which is a shame. So we'll make a change. I'm going to. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to gamble and bring on Cummings for Defoe. He hasn't played that well. So Cummings, a new guy signed from Hibernian. Looks a very good player, hoping he'll get off the mark fairly soon. Seems to be quite in a lot of clubs want him on loan, which I don't really want to loan him out because I think he's good enough to be in the first team at this stage. As Catamol plays the ball back to Watmore. Watmore back to Adam and quickly little triangles. And Cummins is in, he's saved and he puts it in. Jason Cummins has scored his first goal for Sunderland within about five or six minutes of coming off the bench. He taps home the rebound after his initial shot was saved by Mandanda. A lovely start to his Sunderland career. Let's show a free kick into Catamol. Izzy Brown loses the ball, so Crystal Palace builds, but Charlie Adam intercepts. And Crystal Palace are on the back foot here. What more of the ball? He's tackled, but it's no free kick cleared by Mandanda, and hopefully Wiggins will win the ball back, which he does. So we restart the play. Crosses in, headed away. Charlie Allen on the ball. Didn't Donald Love. It'd be really nice if we can get a three points today as they look to break and get in. And that's a superb save from Jordan Pickford. I did think that was going to be the opening goal for, for Crystal Palace, but they do have a free kick. No, they don't have a corner, which is cleared away, and Gary Hooper looks to build. 
Nice long ball into nothing by Hooper, so leaves up a bit of time. Going to make a change. Izzy Brown is going to come off, and I'm going to bring on the experienced Victor Inichibi. Inichibi did really well for us last season. I'm not going to make any more changes because I want to keep a subkeeper option available just in case. And to go to contain for the final few moments of the game. And that appears to be at the full time whistle. So very pleasing start to the season. We've picked up our first three points of a lovely little 1-0 win with Jason coming and scoring his debut goal. And good performances all round really. Defoe was the only player that had a disappointing game, but I had I had the guts to take him off and it worked for us, so that's fantastic. Not the greatest news in the world that Jordan Pickford is going to be out for the next couple of weeks. I don't really want to give him the injection, so we'll leave him to physio. And Victor Nietzsche is going to be out for at least a couple of weeks as well. But we've got 500,000 from Patrick Van Halenhout deal, so she's a very, very nice. We're in eighth position, which is a good starting position. If we're at that position at the end of the season, I'll be a happy man. But lots of football to go between now and then. Our next game that we'll talk through, I imagine it'll be that Chelsea game away on the 9th of September. That will mean we'll get to the end of the transfer window. We might make a signing or two. I doubt we'll make that many. Centre half is my main focus I'm looking at. Potentially, if I can get a good deal for a striker as well. But I haven't got a massive amount of transfer budget. I've got £9 million left. So not a massive amount to use. Overall finance is looking pretty good, 21 million, and a wage budget of only spending 800k out of 1. Point, nearly 1.1 million. So I'm happy with how the finances look. And I might get a few more quid in as well because I've got a couple of deals on the table. But Harvey Kazri is on speaking to Atlanta at the moment with a 3.4 million pound deal. There's also a few loans that could potentially go out as well. In terms of other transfer, just quickly mention Jason Malumbi has joined Bradford City on loan for six months, and Ethan Robson has joined Eastleigh for the rest of the season. So I think that will end episode number 11 for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you have liked what you've seen, please do leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. I've been the FM Novice, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much. And good night.